Welcome back to Stamping at the Warren and I'm Kim Tolton and today I am sharing with you a card made using the Birthday Blossoms stamp set um, which I'm delighted to say is rolling over into the new catalogue um, that comes in June so feel free to keep ordering and um, playing with this beautiful stamp set. I have it in wood mount just because I know I use it a lot. Um, it's one of my favourites because you can make lovely backgrounds and, and just make so many different things, tags, all sorts. Um, I've even used it for making the background for packaging on um, craft paper. Right, so the little card that I am sharing with you is this one. And it is made using a combination of two of the new in colour ink pads, three actually, because I need the green as well. I've just remembered. That's okay, it's sitting right here. <laughs> um, and it uses some of the new sneak peeky, um, affectionately yours designer series paper and also the affectionately yours um, card stock pack um, and you'll notice here if you're familiar with stamping up this is um, mint macaron which is in the rolling over in colours and um, so it just highlights how well the whole thing uh, coordinates so I'm going to show you the products that we're using first and the different pieces of card that you need um, and then we will get on with the making so first of all you need to trim a piece of mint macaron cardstock to 30 centimeters by 10.5 centimeters score straight through the middle there at 14.8 14.9 centimeters to give you a nice um, mounting fold card which stands up really lovely um, on the mantle. Just use your bone folder just to burnish that fold nicely. Um, and then next straight onto that we're going to mat a piece of the designer series paper from affectionately yours. This is the other side of it. Look the lovely flower one that you saw on one of my creations earlier last week. Um, and that measures 14.4 by 10.1 centimetres. You then need the main stamping panel, which is shimmery white cardstock, and that measures 14 by 9.7 centimetres. You then want a 3 centimetre wide strip by just over 10.5 centimetres, because we're going to be putting it at an angle. And then you want another piece of shimmery whisper white or shimmery cardstock um, that measures three centimeters by 10.5 centimeters and it, these two are going to be overlapping. You also need some scrap pieces of uh, shimmery white um, for stamping your flowers and a basic rhinestone, not basic rhinestone, these are the iced rhinestones so these have been carrying over right from last year's autumn winter catalogue. Um, really lovely and I think they make a, a beautiful statement of a centre in the flowers there. So we're using those. Um, we ne you need the pansy punch to punch out the flower um, which coordinates with the flower in the stamp set. And then the three ink pads that I'm using are, now you won't be able to get these yet I know but this is the sneak peek section of the run up to the new catalogue so I'm using Emerald Envy, a Sweet Sugar Plum and Flirty Flamingo right and there will be a little bit of fussy cutting so you'll need some paper snips as well right so let's get making shall we so first of all straight away you can mat this panel straight down onto your card base um, and I'm using fast fuse because it just really works for me I find it cost effective um, 
for holding stuff onto cards because unlike some tapes they that lift off and lift up quite quickly I don't find that happens with these once they're stuck they're stuck so that's that bit done and I'll pop that to one side next you want your main panel don't worry about all the sizes you just watch the video right now everything will be typed up on my blog and there's two ways of linking to my blog so the first way is by going to the icon in the top right of my video there's a little eye click on there and there'll be a link straight to the blog or when you look at the show more section underneath my um, video today there will be a link from my video and click on that that will take you straight to the blog as well and the blog and the video go live at the same time right so the stamps that we're using out of this stamp set is the double leaf uh, we're going to have the have a beautiful birthday with a, a, a banner that's in there the pansy flower and also the background stamp which is like blossoms so we're going to start with the blossoms and I'm going to begin with sweet sugar plum and the reason I'm starting with sweet sugar plum is this is the least intense colour um, and I find that the flirty flamingo goes well over the top of it. I still just want to ink off a little bit just very quickly and I'm just going to do three of these um, so it has a real washed out and that's the ink off of there. Next I'm going with flirty flamingo, flirty flamingo and dapper denim and definitely my favourite ink colours um, in the upcoming collection. Um, obviously you can swap these for whatever colours you've got at the moment. This is a beautiful salmon pink colour and you're just going to go over this and create a real background and just keep going until the ink runs out and make sure you're stamping off the page stamping off means that you don't get all of the image on the page and random stamping is exactly what it means so just move the stamp and your cardstock around um, and it gives you a nice random pattern and you can see that that um, sweet sugar plum has disappeared underneath but it's just poking through enough to give a contrast so that is that. We still need those two ink pads, silly me. So on that scrap of Whisper White, you're going to use the Pansy Punch. And with the Pansy, the um, Flirty Flamingo, you just want to stamp a couple of these. And then in where we go, I've put it over there. And then with the um, sweet sugar plum, I'm just going to stamp one, and that is going to I'm going to stamp off first again because I just want it to be fairly muted. So that's the flowers all stamped. Next is the leaves, so I'm just going to turn that round and again this is another very juicy ink pad um, and so you just want to stamp off before you start stamping your leaves. We're going to do first, second, third generation stamping and all that means is you stamp once, twice, three times without re-inking. You probably, if I go here, you would, yeah, you just about get a fourth one out as well. And that is that part of the stamping. So we're going to punch out the stat, the flowers, 
and you just want to line up your flowers with the punch. That goes one. There goes two. If you ever find it tough, just cut off a little bit underneath or um, a little bit off a corner and you'll find it will line up fine. Three. That's those done. So you can see this one is really an assembly job with a bit of stamping. I do love my stamping. Um, and then we're going to do fussy cutting here. Fussy cutting kind of is what it is. Fussy, cut, fussy cutting is uh, just basically cutting out freehand. You want to leave one to two millimeters of white around the edge and that helps to define the image and what you do is you need hopefully you can watch me there you rotate the card not your scissors it gives a much better finish and it is much easier to control and it actually doesn't take as long as you think if you have lots to do so if I'm making a bulk lot of cards for customers or if I'm doing swaps this is the sort of job I take in to do of an evening whilst the television is on and we go next one and then what you've got there is three different coloured leaves or three tones of the same colour for your leaves which just makes it a bit more interesting a bit more natural because when you look out the window and you look at nature every leaf, every petal, every insect, everything in nature, even us, we are all a mixture of different colours and different tones and different shades of the same colour. Um, and when you're card making, what makes a really lovely card, a really special card, and I don't think we make special cards all the time, I think we make good cards most of the time and then like a cup of tea every once in a while you make an absolute corker and the moment you finish it you think wow I've got that bang on that probably only happens maybe somewhere between a quarter to an eighth of the time the rest of the time you make beautiful cards and that's normal but it's also normal for the others to be okay and okay for a handmade card is exquisite. So don't beat yourself up if you think yours aren't up to the grade. If you don't have a go and if you don't practice, you won't get better. It has taken me, well I've been working with card and paper and rubber stamps since I was a small girl. And I'm still learning. And I love that. I love the challenge of learning a new technique or learning a new skill or coming across something thinking, why didn't I think of that earlier? So there you go. So we've got three leaves, three flowers. So just blue dots, just to pop a leaf on the back of each. And what you want to try and do is mix up the leaf tone with the... Uh, flower tone so if you've got a really intense um, leaf then pop it with maybe a bit of a quieter flower and vice versa so I think I'm gonna go that way so I just plan mine out first and then we'll go with a glue dot and all you do is just pop a glue dot On there and just pop it straight on the back 
and just repeat that with each of your leaves. And obviously make the leaves go down in different places. Overlap the leaves with the flowers. That randomness is what makes a card so beautiful. And I've done that the wrong way around, haven't I? That's what you get for talking. Peel that off. Put it on the right place and pop it on the back. It's not easy, you know, talking on a video. <laughs> It catches you out every once in a while, especially when your brain goes blank and you think, oh my goodness, what on earth was I doing? There you go. Hey ho. Right, so there are flowers ready to rock and roll. So then that little strip that was three centimetres wide, you just want, I'm, because of the colours of the ink, the uh, card and papers, I think I'm going to go with early espresso rather than black because it's just a little bit warmer and not quite so intense. And just stamp that down. If you're not too sure on your placings, use a stamp -a majig Look, it didn't come out. That's not good, is it? Turn it over, start again. I suspect that ink pad needs re-inking. Looks like it, doesn't it? Maybe we'll go with a different one. Obviously that time of the year for me to re-ink my stamps. That's okay. Um, I usually re-ink my stamps every quarter. And, uh, or my stamp, my, I re-ink my ink pads every quarter um, and that way it keeps them nice and juicy and they don't dry out. Hey, yay, got it that time. So I just find a day where I'm mulling around, not a lot to do and I think, okay. And this came about by chance, I was actually going to have um, the shimmery white go right across and then mat onto a slightly wider piece of the designer series paper. And as I did it, I ended up putting both pieces at an angle and thought, oh, I rather like that. So that's what we're going with, ladies. So I'm just going to put a piece of fast fuse along here and just put this at a rough angle and snip off use my paper shears because they're a bit bigger and just snip off the excess same on that side don't throw those pieces away, they're good enough for punching out maybe a couple of little petite petal flowers. And then with this one, we're going to go in the opposite direction like that. So I think we can, yeah, let's go with fast fuse again. So we're just going to crisscross this so they overlap. And again, just snip off any excess paper. You could run it through the trimmer just to take off any edges, but we're matting this onto the card front, so that'll be fine. Card making should be easy. Right, some stamping dimensionals to pop this up. Now the video also gets published on my blog. Um, so that if you're watching the video, if you're watching, if you want the instructions, I mean, um, then you can, instead of going flicking backwards and forwards between YouTube and the 
blog then you can just watch the video via the blog post and then it's less fuffing around. Some of you will be super fast at taking bits down. I never was so um, I still not. So I prefer to read instructions. There we go. Almost there. Right so now for flowers one, two, three, and we're just going to put these on and make a pretty pattern. So I think we're going to go with one up here, one around there, and the last one down there. How's that? So the top one and this one will pop up with a dimensional just to give it that texture I do like things to be popped up I think it really makes cards sing then one there I have tried wedging up my um, my video my video stand tripod. There you go. I knew I'd get the name eventually. Um, so it's a slightly different shot. So I'm hoping that you get better view than before. I do keep trying different things to try and give you the best viewing possible with the videos. I actually think that the two is more than enough. I don't think we need more than that. It's going to overcrowd it otherwise. Right, get your paper piercing tool and select a couple of these ice drying stones. Pop one in the centre of each flower. I think I'm going to go with that one and that one and leave the top one. And there you are. So that was the original. And there is today's one, the one that we've just done. Um, and you'll see that there's always a variation. You could sponge the edges of the flowers if you wanted to make it a little bit more... Um, Special. that would look really really pretty same as sponging the edges maybe of the um, birthday banner but it's entirely up to you and um, just all I hope is that my videos give a little bit of inspiration to you um, and gives you some ideas and some new techniques we have got some watercolouring coming this week two watercolour projects so um, watch out for those one uses the new in colours, one uses the rolling over in colours um, and they're both really super little projects. I love doing watercolour techniques so watch out for those. Don't forget all my social media information is in the show more section underneath today's video um, and the links are on there for ordering via my online demonstrator store and um, if you would like to start pinning on my community Pinterest board just start following the board if you go to my blog there is a link in the show more section but also if you go to my blog you will see on the left hand sidebar that there is a Pinterest board um, up there if you click on that that is the community board so if you start following it I do check you out to make sure you have an interest in paper craft um, and it is only for paper craft, nothing else. Um, so it is physical paper craft, not e paper craft. I don't mind people using their silhouettes and things like that. That's absolutely fine. Um, but no um, digital images. Um, and um, it's a great place for people coming together and sharing their ideas. Um, it doesn't have to be stamping up stuff that you pin, it can be any sort of paper craft. I'm really not precious about that. And um, it's just a nice place to get to know you all and uh, 
have a bit more of a two-way thing rather than just me sitting here yakking away to you. So that's it for today. I'll speak to you again tomorrow. Ta-ta for now.